huddling here, they're huddling. So um, that is a very good question. Thank you so much for asking. Um, what does it take to be a magic man? Um, in my opinion, I think that um, what it takes to be a magic man is we, all of us just love performing and we love to um, put a smile on everyone's faces. I think at the end of the day, that's the big goal for us. And um, I feel like, like we have done that for you guys so far, I think we've done a good job. So it's just to make everyone feel comfortable. I think that's the main goal for all of us. Thank you. And were you thinking of joining up? <laughs> what do you think? Just you, you, look, you look the part. You look ready. Maybe 500 more push-ups. Show us the rib. Show us, show us the six-pack. We might be looking for a new Filipino member, so you can you can join us on stage on Saturday and Sunday. We'll see how you go. So, are you allowed to have um, you know significant others while doing this job? I mean. The girls want to know, and also if you're willing to audition girlfriends. <laughs> um, just so you know, I am single myself. <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a few. There's obviously across Australia, we've got over 130 magic men. So some of them are married, some of them have partners, some of them have kids. So um, you can definitely make it work. Trust is the most important thing in any relationship. Relationships are always hard, whatever the relationship is. So yeah, you can definitely have partners while you're doing it, as long as they're understanding in the work that you do. Um, but yeah, single, married, you can still be a magic man. Would you like to add anything to that, any one of you? Uh, yeah, look, I'd like to add that, you know, on top of making everyone feel comfortable, um, here at Magic Men, we really are just looking for a gentleman. You know, someone that can come into the room and make each and every single person feel special, regardless of your age, your gender, your background, and your sexual preference. You know, for one night, you get to come to Magic Men, let your hair down, and let us do all the work. So just sit back, relax, and um, we'll make sure you have a good time. Um, well, we have a weekend to let our hair down. Yeah, go ahead. I was, uh, I was going to add as well, one thing we all have in common, all of us boys, the passion that we have for performing, we're all entertainers at heart, so we all are putting a smile on people's faces, we all are making feel, people feel as comfortable as they can, because that also makes the show look better. When we have a lady or a gentleman on stage with us, and they feel comfortable being on stage with us, the, the, the energy is felt, not just between us, but the entire crowd feels it, and it's just something that we really pride ourselves on, and it's, it's a fantastic thing. Thank you. Doc Rika, anything else you want to... Yeah, I was just going to add to what, similar to what Sean said, is that a lot of the guys do take pride in the professionalism. So when you were asking about girlfriends and stuff like that, the, most of the guys, the girlfriends and wives, really see that a lot of us are really professional and we take pride in that. So especially the guys who are single, you, you know, there's a big misconception that strippers can come across as sleazy, but that's not really the case. And you guys will see that um, on the weekends. So yeah, that's all I wanted to add. We can't wait. Any more questions from our friends from the press? Hi, name and company? I got a friend named Leo Mendiola from OLU at the beach. So I heard that uh, it is only the Philippines that uh, is your first, uh, your, your only stop in Asian country. Uh, why did you choose the Philippines? Um, touching on what I said earlier, we get a lot of the Filipino crowd in Australia. Um, so we, we, we already know it's going to be an amazing, warm welcome. And um, yeah, we, we also, the back of house staff at Magic Men Australia is actually all Filipino. So, where better to start in Asia than the Philippines? And then the other one is, in terms of your choreography, do you have an in-house choreographer or do you do it yourself? Yeah, I think it's a bit of a mix of both. A lot of us have um, had chore professional choreographs uh, moves and dances in part of our routines, but also a lot of us like to create some ourselves. So it's sort of a mix. Um, and we also try to help each other out and inspire each other a lot. You know, sometimes we'll throw in suggestions and say, oh, why don't we try the dances like this and like this? And so we're always constantly trying to help each other and improve. So it's a combination of make it ourselves and, and get professional dance teachers as well. Just to add to that as well, we've got such a unique team 
or through our Magic Pen with our touring team. So everyone brings something different to the table. You know, we've got dancers, acrobats, all people from different backgrounds. Um, so we all bring a specific uniqueness to the stage and that's what forms together to make such a great show. So it's not just a show you're getting, it's a personality from each and every one of us on stage and you'll see that in the show on Saturday. Also, just to add to what Nick was saying just about with our individual performers, um, yes, we are all individuals, but um, we're a team, and th I think the reason that makes our show so unique is that we work as a team, and I feel like you guys will see that this weekend. Hi! <laughs> Here she is. <laughs> Trouble. Hi, good afternoon. I am Hazel from GMA um, Entertainment. So, uh, I would like to welcome you guys here in the Philippines and we're very excited to watch your show off um, this weekend. So um, just, I just want to ask, have you tried any uh, Filipino food? And um, if you haven't, um, what are the food that, <laughs> that you want to try? Thank you. Since you have Filipino friends, yeah? Have you tried at least lumpia or pancit is like the common thing? Well, when I arrived at the airport, I pointed at a um, at a shop and it was called Jolly Bee's. And I was like, I'd be keen to check that out. So um, actually today we all gave it a crack and it was unreal. It was, it was good, like the um, spaghetti was definitely my favorite and the mango pie. So that was a good dish. I enjoyed that. See, thank you so much. Cause I was just explaining to them, ladies and gentlemen, how the certain personality just was so rude while he tried the food, the bar. Um, please uh, add to that, anybody from yeah, the group? Yeah, yesterday at lunch, um, I, I, I do struggle to remember the names of some of these dishes, but there was a, like a, in, a black ink rice paella. I really enjoyed that one. That was really cool. I really enjoyed that. It had rice? It had like black rice and it was a paella. And there was some photo photo photo. as well. It was really good. Because I would totally like adore you 10 times more if you ate adobo pussy. Which we probably have in the menu. Yes. Oh, <laughs> did I hear what I think I heard? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Push it, push it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm slow. I'll tell you what, we're not a pilot tonight, are we? I'm sorry. Oh, we're not a pilot tonight, are we? The Filipino food so far has been absolutely fantastic and I've made sure of that because some of these boys they don't eat all the food on their plate so they pass them down my way so the, 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 the pusse, the, the, um, the, 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 the paella, fantastic, oh my god, the local cuisine here is exquisite, I can't wait to try more. Sean, say it one more time, say it one more time, how do you pronounce it? Pussy! <laughs> Fantastic! Well, we all really enjoy the Filipino Pussy. <laughs> oh Hi, good afternoon. I'm Chad from Manila Queen. Welcome to the Beauty Beats, and we can't wait for your show on Saturday. So, for my question, what is the sexiest part of your body, and if you can show it to us? <laughs> The sexiest part is my personality. You can work that out of the show. <laughs> I'd say my sexiest per part of my body is my smile, so <laughs> I'm happy to show that to you guys. Let's see it, let's see yeah, let, let's see. Let's see the smile. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to have to go with the stock standard answer everyone's been looking for. Oh! <laughs> the sexiest part of my body, I think, uh, I like my shoulders, to be honest. Should I give it a little bit of a... Should I give it a little bit of a... Yes, go! Take it on, take it on. Take it on. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, girl, it's um, pretty nice. Yeah. 
I'll uh, show you my Saturday. So um, I would say probably the sexiest part of my body would probably be my legs, my quads. Oh, <laughs> Give me enough tequila, we all on Saturday. I might, uh, 
Piano, piano. I think it's a bit of a jam, so. My one is a little bit random, so a fun fact about myself is I actually have straight thumbs. It's a very straight thumb. Oh, what, very a, what a defect you have there. Oh my God. Poor horrendous. That is just unacceptable. Straight thumb, you guys. I have a comment, but I will not. <laughs> uh, fun fact about me, um, I'm actually black. No, it's not obvious. No. <laughs> no, um, I really love animal documentaries. Anybody have dogs? Yes. How many dogs do you have? Do you want to add more dogs? <laughs> Do you, do you work hard for your dog too, like I am? That's why I'm here. <laughs> uh, so fun fact about me, I actually have a twin brother. Oh, oh, oh. Where's he? He's uh, at home. He's filling in for my day job. The boss doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good trick. Yeah, very handy. He will probably be with us next year when we come back. Who knows? Oh, so, he's going to be one of you? Soon. Soon. Very soon. Looking forward to that. Two of you. <laughs> I know, right? Guys, I, I have a serious question. I volunteer. I volunteer for this nonprofit piece of work um, called HWPL, and that's my my org mate right there. Child is from Melbourne. Um, <laughs> how do you make peace a reality? Who would like to take take that question? Answer that. How do you make peace a reality? That's a great question. It's a very tricky one because I think uh, to make peace a reality requires communication.